And so let's just pretend like that these Skillshare items were from, uh, from us, the owner. We put money in. Now, if we put money in, then we probably wouldn't have a Skillshare thing here. It would just say that there was a bank deposit of some kind. We might not have much more detail than that other than it's a deposit. So then we would say, okay, the only thing we would know is like the dollar amount, which might be conspicuously even oftentimes, because when you make a deposit, you don't put 1,277.55, you probably put 1,300 or something <laughs> into it, right? So that's one way you can kind of differentiate uh, the deposits. But uh, also, of course, if you have the bank fee detail, when the deposits are coming in from customers, that's another way that you can uh, kind of uh, differentiate it. So if I go into it and I say, okay, let's assume that this one was a deposit from, let's say it came from a loan that we took out. So I'm going to say this is going to be a Skillshare, let's just call it Skillshare Bank, Skillshare Bank, assuming it's a loan of some kind. And so I'm going to add that. Now it's not exactly a customer, but I'm going to add it as a customer because it's a deposit. It's not a customer or vendor really. The point is it's not going to go to an income account. It's got to go to a loan account. So I'm going to set up a new account for it, adding account. And I'm just going to call it a other current liability account. And I'm going to call it a loan payable account, loan payable account. So that's good. Now note that if you have multiple loan payable accounts, there's other issues with regards to the loans that you put on the books. Uh, and let's talk about that in, in a second here, but you might have like a, a loan parent account and then you might put the other loans underneath the parent account. But right now I just want to concentrate on the fact that we're not recording it as income. So I'm going to save it and close it. And so there we have it. We could, we, we probably wouldn't set up a rule necessarily because the, because this isn't a transaction that's going to happen all the time. What you want to do with all the other rules that you set up is make them specific enough so that they would not pick up as income this this deposit from the bank, right? Because the other rules are going to pick up only the items that are that are somewhat specific. If you have a very broad rule that says all deposits I want you to record as income, then you're you're gonna you're gonna miss these deposits that might come from you or the bank and mistakenly record them as income instead of as a as a loan. So let's see what this would look like if we record it. Let's add it. And so boom, I'm going to go to the balance sheet and then scroll up top and run it. So if I scroll up top and run it, I can go down to the checking account. So if I go to the checking account, again, I can sort it and customize it up top, filtering it possibly by transaction type, looking at just the deposits. And then I might look at the name and I might want to look at the bank what did I call it? I called it Skillshare Bank. Skillshare isn't really a bank, obviously, but there it is. There's the deposit. Then if I go into it, it's coming from a deposit form. So it's a deposit form, but now it's not going to an income line like we did last time, but instead to a, a loan going back to the balance sheet. The other side, instead of going to the income statement, is now down here in a liability account for the loan payable. So going into that, there's our loan payable account. So going back on over now, just a general rule with the loans. Uh, let's just look at our, our accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Assets are what we have in the business that they're in the business instead of us having them personally because we're using them in order to help generate revenue in the future. And we're doing so because we think the business is capable of, of getting a higher return then us taking the money out and then putting it into like stocks and bonds, for example. We finance the assets, property, plants and equipment, inventory primarily by either taking out a loan, right? We take out the loan to buy the property, plants and equipment, finance it so that we can then generate revenue in the future or through ourselves, our own investment, the equity from the owners, either us investing it, putting it in from our personal side or us retaining the money that has been earned in the business, reinvesting it in the assets that we're purchasing in the business to further uh, grow the business. That's going to be uh, the general idea why we would have the, the 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 liabilities and the loans. 
So notice it's a little bit complex when you have to deal with the financing because kind of you're not on it on, you know, specifically at like a cash system per se now because now you've got to track this loan payable and there's going to be an, an added component with the loan payable, which is the financing of the loan, which is interest. So just a couple things with loans in general. When you put the loan on the books, you might have multiple loans. So in that case, you might make a, a parent loan account and then make multiple uh, subsidiary accounts to it, listing out each of the financial institutions you got the loan from and possibly the last four digits of the loan number. So for internal reporting, you can track each loan by its loan balance. And for external reporting, you can collapse it to one loan account so that you can give it for external reporting purposes or tax preparation uh, if necessary. Also, you might have short-term and long-term portions of the loan. If a loan that you took out is gonna extend beyond a year and you're paying it in installments, like our natural format that we're often most used to, like a mortgage type of loan, you're paying off in same installments, you could have a short-term and long-term portion of the loan. Now, it's not useful, it's not helpful to break out short-term and long-term every time you record a payment to the loan because that's tedious and we can't tie out the balance to the loan. So in that case, I would recommend having one account for the loan payable, breaking out short-term and long-term portion periodically at the end of the year or the end of the month so that you can have that for external reporting purposes, tax preparation purposes, and managerial purposes to kind of make sure you got the cash flow to, to pay off the upcoming uh, loan balances. And then you reverse it so you have only one account so that when you make the actual payments, they're going to that loan account. Another issue with the loan is that maybe you don't get the amortization schedule because you just get the terms of the loan. They might not include an amortization table breaking out interest and principal of each payment. You can make one if they give you the loan terms in Excel or you can possibly have your accountant uh, or CPA or tax preparer help you out with an amortization table. And then when you make the payments to the loan, there's going to be a principal portion and an interest portion of the payments to the loan. What you would like to do, what we've been doing over here on the bank feeds is trying to make the payments on the loan in such a way that they will be automatic, automating them to the extent we can. Because there's a difference between the interest and principal payment, even though the decrease to cash is the same, it makes it difficult to automate the payments. So that's another issue that we have with, with regards to the loan payments. A couple ways you can deal with that. Uh, you, you could, every time you make a loan payment, you can go in there, see it going through the bank feeds and adjust it to match the amortization schedule, properly recording interest expense and loan reduction, or you could you you possibly could just make your payments decreasing all of it to the loan payable account ignoring interest for the time being recognizing that at the end of the year or the end of the month you or your accountant is going to take the amortization schedule and then adjust the interest versus the the uh, principal portion of the loan and break out the short term and long term portion periodically if you use that system, you can automate the payments, right? Then I can automate the payments and I can just do periodic adjustments at the end of the period. And that might be a way to go if you're trying to be a bookkeeper that is trying to automate everything as much as possible, but you have to be working with a good CPA or accountant that can make the adjusting entries at the end of the period.